and welcome to my studio. This is Karen Margulis and I'm about to do a painting, a landscape painting, but what I want to share with you today are two ways that you can start your painting off with a bang. And what do I mean by that? It means how can you get a painting started in the right direction so that you have a better chance of a successful painting. And there are two things that I want to share with you that help me have more successful paintings because I start off with a bang. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a landscape painting demonstration for you and show you these two things put into practice. And I just want to say in advance before I even get started that I want you to stick through and watch this video till the end because the painting I uh, w will usually go through some sort of transition and it will get to the point that we often call the ugly stage. Meaning it looks like um, it's not going to turn out into be anything. And um, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully as I continue with the painting I will be able to resolve it and it will turn into something that I could be pleased with. But it does have to, I have to work with it. So stick with me. Um, and so here we go. So, what I'm going to paint for you today, because we are in the month of March and hopefully thinking about spring here in uh, where I am in Georgia, but this is Texas. These are the blue bonnets. And I visited there a few years ago and I love painting um, any type of flower, as you probably know, but I love the blue bonnets. I, I like the um, interesting colors. Uh, but just know this, if you're not a flower painter, what I'm going to show you in this demo, you can adapt to any really type of landscape that you like to paint with or without flowers. So flowers to me are, are fun to paint, but I would do the same thing even if this was a field with, a, with nothing, just a landscape. So what I said I was going to share with you two ways to start your painting, painting off with a bang. The first tip that I want to give you is start with a plan. So oftentimes we get started with a painting and we take, put out our reference photo and we just start and we don't take a, a few minutes to think about what we want to do. And then we run into trouble and we wonder why. So start with a plan. I like to say make a plan then plan to let go. Now there are a few steps to my plan. Here's my reference photo. I like to work small so that I can be more expressive and interpret the photo rather than copy it. I don't want to see all the details because I don't want to put in all the details. The next thing I do is I ask myself why. What is it about this scene that I want to capture? And of course it's the field of blue bonnets, but I, I think also I enjoy that it leads us back into the distance and, and there's some interesting trees. I'm going to make some editing decisions on this and it, it's probably hard to see in the video but know that I'm going to eliminate some of the trees because it's just too many different uh, it, it's too much clutter so I'm editing the clutter. There's also a fence and I like this idea of the fence, but I, I don't want it to create a barrier. So I'm going to, if I put in a fence, I'll do it at the end, and I will just kind of have it a broken fence, kind of uh, a little bit more loosely interpreted. So once I have a plan, that's my plan, I want to lead us back into the distance, walk us through these flowers. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick value thumbnail. And I usually break it down anywhere from two values, a dark and a light, up to four values. And I never do more than that. This one happens to have um, four. There's the dark shape, which is the tree. Uh, the light shape is the sky. The middle value shape is the distant tree line. And then I'm putting a middle value leading us into the field. This is a middle dark value. And the rest of the field is middle light value. And it's really hard to see, I know, but it's not pure white. It's very pale gray. Sometimes in the planning stage, I go ahead and I, I do a very quick study. This is a little uh, three and a half by two and a half by three and a half color study. And that just helps me select the colors that I'm going to use for the painting. All right, so that's tip number one. Take time to make a plan. It didn't take me very long to make a plan for this. and it will help me solve a lot of problems before I get uh, into the painting. Second tip, start your painting with a bang by starting the painting darker and bolder than you anticipate that it's going to be. And I'll see if that makes sense. You can always tone things down or lighten 
things in pastel by layering. But it's really hard to get that bang back if you don't have it in the beginning. Things tend to get muddier and dirtier the more you layer trying to put those darks over the light. So start darker, start bolder, and know that you have the power to tone it down if it's a little too much. So <clears throat> with that being said, those are my tips, and let's go ahead and get started with the demo. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my little thumbnail and not my photograph. Uh, and because I made some changes from the photo and I really want to follow along what, uh, with the changes that I made rather than copy what's in the photo. You can see I ended up with just one tree shape. I eliminated some of the other clutter and I added <clears throat> excuse me, some distant trees so that I can create a better sense of depth. And then I'm going to create what I call a suggested pathway through the flowers. And this hopefully I'm going to make more sense as I develop it. So the flowers will kind of, the main flowers will be along this pathway. And then that'll, there'll be some dirt underneath that will help pull our, our eye back. I also want to indicate that some of the cloud shapes or the direction of my marks in the sky are also going to pull us down into the painting. So those lines are just for that. So I'm going to do a dry wash underpainting. And by the way, this is a piece of pastel matte paper. It's a gray pastel piece of pastel matte paper, which is a sanded paper, but it's pretty smooth. But it holds a lot of pastel. But it's really hard to move the pastel around until you have enough layers down. So I'm going to just do a dry wash. I'm not going to wet it. Um, and just this is a very quick, easy way to get started. And I'm going to start off by blocking in the darks using some hard pastel. So this is a new pastel. And I'm going to start with a dark blue. Remember, start with a bang by starting darker and bolder than you anticipate the painting will be. So I'm going to start with the dark tree shape and a little bit of dark uh, underneath the tree right here just to ground it a little bit and th then I'm going to move on. I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit dark. It's not in my thumbnail but I really want to darken the foreground a little bit so that you can slip into the painting and not get hung up by the light shapes that will be here. Alright, the second thing to start with a bang is to be bolder than you want to be. So I know that these are going to be some of the blue bonnets which are kind of bluish purple sometimes even pinkish. Uh, so I'm going to take a really bright blue and color in this suggested pathway. This is probably bolder and brighter than I will get for most of the flowers, but I'm going to start with a bang by putting them in right now bolder than I think I'm going to get. Now we're left with some of the uh, grassy areas where there may not be as many flowers. I'm going to go bolder again by blocking it in with this bright reddish salmon-y color. And I'm using this color because I know I'm going to have a lot of green. And I know that this color will help make the green a little bit more interesting. I'm noticing though that I have a line on my paper. One of the things about this paper is it can be easily um, dented, you know, if you press too hard. So somehow this paper got dented, but I will be able to fill that area in. So if that happens to you, don't, don't uh, <clears throat> worry about it too much. Now remember we had that distant trees that I want to put in the background. I'm going to just use a kind of uh, dark, it, it's more of a blue, uh, blue gray then this one is more of a dark blue-green. It doesn't look very much different, but it, it will remind me that I want So I'm rubbing it in as best I can, but the fact is, unless you have several layers on pastel mat, it really doesn't move the pastel around very much. I'm not so concerned with this particular painting because the tone of the paper, this nice gray tone, really unifies everything regardless. But if you had white paper or very light color, sometimes you really want to rub in that first layer so that those little light bits don't uh, become a distraction. Alright, 
Now, we've got the first layer rubbed in, and it is time to start layering with our softer pastels. And for this painting, I'm going to use Terry Ludwig pastels. This happens to be my um, floral landscape selection. And I like to use it just because I, I know that it has the colors that I need to successfully paint a landscape. But if you don't have this, really, you just need to have a variety of values and colors and intensities. And over on my Patreon page uh, last month, I gave a handout that helps you choose or helps you create a comprehensive pastel collection. So you don't have to go out and buy anyone's particular set. You can look at what you have and build from there. So uh, if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon page. All right, so we're going to... Go ahead and start by reinforcing the dark areas. What is dark? Well, the uh, tree shape. So I'm going to start with a dark blue and very lightly put in the tree shape and then I'm going to start by putting in the trunks and some of the branches. And this was kind of a nice interesting shaped tree. Now, here's this part. Remember I wanted to put some dark just to kind of ground some of these trees that are in the background? If I put this dark all the way across, it becomes a worm-like shape that is just not very interesting. Um, so I'm going to just use a light touch just to have it broken up a little bit more. I'm adding some more of the dark down here at the foreground just to ground everything. And then that's the first layer in the darks. But I would like to build up my darks by having more than one layer. So I'm going to actually take a dark red and very lightly go over those same dark areas. I'm doing this because I want to build up my darks so that they are an interesting mix of color rather than just go right for the, what do we say, the tree is green? I don't want to go right to the green. I'm going to build up a couple of layers first and now I'm going to go to the green. So there's the dark green in the tree and down here in the foreground area, just spread a few pieces of that dark just because I know I want to break up the field a little bit more. So I'm adding the dark green right in there. All right, that's a dark warm green. It's got more yellow in it, but I also have a dark cool green. And I'm going to use that because it's more of a blue green to ground those distant trees. They have to be cooler, more blue so that they get pushed back so that they recede. Um, and since I'm working on that, distant tree line, I'm going to go ahead and finish it, and I have a nice uh, blue-gray, and that works really well to paint distant things that are in the distance, helps push them back, lighter, cooler, duller, fuzzier, and I need to use some of it to break up the tree trunk area. So you see I just made a couple of marks right in this tree area to help pull out the trunk. So that's called negative painting when we do that. I have an even lighter value of that blue-gray, so I'll put a little bit of that just to give a variety. And there we have the distant tree lines and all the darks. The next thing that I'm going to do is paint the sky. But before I do the sky, I need to add a little bit more green to the trees, to this tree rather. Uh, so I'm going to take a warmer, more yellowy green just to break up and give it a little bit more interest. Now I can paint, now I know how wide it's going to be, how, what the shape of it is. I can go ahead and paint the sky. Now in my photo, the sky was kind of uh, brooding. It was going to be stormy. Uh, I could do that, but um, I could also make it a sunnier kind of blue sky with a few clouds. So I'm going to go in that direction. <coughs> so I'm going to start with a darker blue at the top part of the sky add a little bit of a lighter value to that on top so that I can I don't want the sky to look dark like nighttime 
So, but I start dark, but then I, I vary it by adding the light on top. Now I'm adding an even lighter value on top. And now as the sky approaches the horizon, it will get warmer. So I'm going in with a more of a pale turquoise and pulling it up into the rest of the sky to lighten it some. I want a smooth transition of my blue in the sky so that it doesn't look like a parfait of blue stripes. Oh, someone's mowing the lawn. You know, uh, we watch this cooking sh show on YouTube and someone, the, the guy cooks outside and someone is always mowing the lawn when he's trying to cook. Oh, that's what I get. All right. So, I'm starting to use the blue to break up the top of the tree, add some sky holes where some of the branches might be. And I'm going to just, it's not, and then I'm going to remind myself, Karen, it's not really about the tree. Notice I, I tap with my finger just to um, soften some of those edges. This painting is not about the tree, so don't get so hung up on the tree. I, I, I know a lot of times when we paint, we get to an area and then we're like, oh, that's not right, that's not right, I gotta fix that, I gotta fix that. And then you fuss and fuss and fuss in a single area and you totally neglect the rest of your painting. Whereas if you had just stopped for a minute and said, wait, you know what, it's not as bad as I think, let me just move on and then I'll come back to it if it still needs work. And uh, that's good advice that I need to take myself often. So what did I just do? I just picked up a nice warm peachy color because at the horizon we typically are going to get lighter and even warmer so I need to break up the tree with that color as well. Now I'm ready to move on to the rest of the painting which are the flowers which is what this is all about. So I already put some color down to start off with this really bright color. But we don't want the ground to really be that bright and intense, but we do want some dirt color in there. So I'm going to tone it down. Remember, you can start bright and bold and dark. You can always tone it down. So I'm taking a pale peachy color and just laying that on top of that really bright color. And I have one that's a little bit darker. And I'm going to start to pull it down into this dark shadowy area. This is the foundation. When I put in the dark and the blue in the beginning stages, it's really just the foundation so that now I can start to build upon that. All right, so now we have dirt. I call this the dirt. Now it's time to come in and put in more indication of the flowers and then starting with the green so that I know that as we go back into space, things are going to get lighter, cooler, duller, even these uh, uh, blue bonnets. So I'm using a lighter blue, using the pastel on its side to create kind of random rows of these blue uh, flowers so it looks like they are going back into the distance. As I come forward, I can use more intense or brighter blues and I don't have that in my set necessarily so I have this box I call this my blue bonnet box and it's just an assortment of, of various pastels that are what I consider blue bonnet or lupin or any kind of blue flower so wherever you are in the world when you have a blue purple flower you can use uh, these colors so I keep them in this box and I pull them out when I know I'm painting some of uh, this type of flower. So I'm going to use them to indicate where these flowers might be growing. Now, the other thing when I'm painting fields of flowers is that I don't paint single blooms or blossoms until the end until the end of the painting and I'll just pull out a few. In this stage I'm just painting wide areas of, of, of blue with the side of my pastel. Now I'm not getting fussy with the details. If I were to add a tip to this video the tip would be don't decorate too soon. 
and a lot of times we decorate before we um, have enough information down. So it's really hard because decorating is the fun part. You know, painting the individual flowers, that's the fun part. This part is not as much fun. And this is where I would say um, the ugly stage. Like, what's going to happen with this? You know, what, what, what are you doing? Well, this is the ugly stage. So I'm going to take <coughs> the ugly stage, use a little bit of workable fixative. This is what I like to use. And I'm going to give it a very light spray. And the reason why is I want to kind of lock these colors into place just a little bit. So that now I'm going to start coming over with the greens. And I really want there to be a little bit more tooth. Plus, I like that when I go over a fixed area, it gives kind of the illusion of some texture. So, we're going to start in the back of this field. And to lay it down flat, we're going to use a duller, lighter green. And I'm going to use... Um, horizontal bands of color rather than uh, individual blades of grass and then I'm going to mix up the dull light greens. I don't want to use just one dull light green. So I have two and actually have another one that I can use. Why am I doing this? So that it's more interesting. Again I'm using the pastel on its side and creating horizontal bands of the green color. And I'm also trying to leave a lot of those little blue marks that I put in earlier in place. Okay, as I come fo forward, move to the foreground, I'm starting to increase the intensity of the green that I use. So it's still a little bit light, but it's more of that typical green that we would say um, is that grassy green that you might find in a field of flowers. This is a, dark, a little bit of a darker green. So I'm going to just put it in there just to ground some of these flowers. Because remember I started off real dark, but it's starting to get a little bit lighter now the more layers I add. So I need to restore some of that dark. I am covering up some of the flowers at this point, but that's okay because a lot of them are still going to peek through. Now here's the interesting thing where I have to start to uh, be more mindful of where I'm making my marks. Here's a really nice grassy green. This is that bright green that you might find in the grass. I can also use warmer greens in the foreground. So here's a green that has a lot of yellow in it. And I'm just going to put some here in the foreground. Alright, so now I'm at the point where everything is just painted in big broad strokes. And it's time to actually refine where I'm going to put the flowers. And I also want to give you a journey through this. Remember, that was my concept, to move through the field of flowers to get back into the distance. But right now, I've kind of covered my path. So I need to restore that, and I'm going to come in, and that's where I'm going to put the flower marks. So what are blue bonnets? They're kind of short, little, linear kind of flowers. They're not round flowers. They're not real tall and spiky, but they're kind of short. A combination of blues and violets. So I'm just making a few marks, like so, to indicate those flower shapes. The idea being if I paint a few with a little bit of detail, your eye, your brain will fill in the rest and you'll be able to say, oh, okay, that's a field of blue flowers. I get it. But as I go into the distance, what has to happen to them? They're going to get lighter. They're going to get smaller. Short, even shorter, they're going to get even less detailed. So I'm going to put a little bit more detail in here, but as I go into the distance, they're going to be just little specks. So we've got to have that transition zone where we go from the bigger flowers to a little bit shorter and smaller and even less detailed. And when I'm in this stage, typically, this is really uh, 
the best thing you can do is put in a few marks and step back. Put in a few marks and step back. It's really hard when you're on top of it to um, get the effect to make sure that you are putting the flowers in the right place. Because the worst thing you can do is start putting flowers everywhere. Because if they're everywhere, the, the viewer does not know where to go. It's just overwhelming. So someone will look at the painting and say, oh yeah, that's nice. But they, they move on because they're not so sure where you want them to go. All right, so now I'm at the point <clears throat> where you can see this visual pathway. It's leading us to the back. Um, I'm going to just decide where I'm going to put a few that have more details that more detail than others. I'm looking at my little color study, and I see that I have in the little color study some nice, really red violet. <clears throat> I want to throw a few of those in there just because I like what it looks like in the little color study. All right. The next thing I'm going to do, and this is getting to the finishing stage of the painting, is I want to add a little bit more detail to the tree itself and then pull out a few flowers here. So let's start with the tree. And we can assume that the sun is over here. Let's make a little sun. So that means the right side of this tree will have a little bit more light. So that will give, help give it a little bit more of uh, form. So I don't want to get carried away. I don't want to put it everywhere. I don't need a whole lot of detail there. I um, Something's kind of messy with this. I don't know what happened. So let's add a little bit more green and fix that. All right, now I'm going to create a few flowers that have more detail than the others. So this is where you might need to uh, get a better picture of the flowers you're trying to paint, whether it be blue bonnets or whether it be sunflowers. Uh, and if you have, then you can see, I'm going to start with a darker color, that they are kind of a collection of little petals together and they're on little spikes. So I'm using the pastel, the darker one that I have, the darker blue violet, and I'm making some dots close together. Just And I'm pressing very hard. And the reason why I'm pressing hard is because I want these detailed marks to contrast with the more painterly abstract marks. And why am I doing that? Because your eye will pick up on that contrast when you see the different quality of marks. They're a little bit lighter on top. And I, again, I don't want to put detail everywhere, but I do need a few more, especially in the foreground, that have a little bit more detail. Little dots. And you'll see that some of them are <clears throat> have even lighter areas on top, so I'm going to pull out a lighter blue and then just Put a little bit of lighter blue on the tops of some of these. And I can spend it, let me just say this, I can spend as much time as I want creating as much detail as I want. And each one of us will be, uh, will have our own personal comfort level of what we like as far as detail in a painting. You know, some of, some of us might have been happy where at the detail where the painting was five minutes ago. Some of us might feel like you want a little bit more detail. But I think what I want you to get also out of this video is that you we still need to start <clears throat> somewhere with a base, this out of focus, kind of dark and bold underpainting so that I then have the ability to take this as far as I want or leave it alone. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, I call this my grass box. And this is just a collection of hard pastels. And I use it usually at the end of a painting when I want to create some finer detail. So I can come in if I want to create some of the grasses that may be growing in this area. Some of the leaf shapes that go along with the blue bonnets. If I can... Again, 
put in a couple or a few, then the viewer's eye can fill in the rest and say, oh, okay, I see what that is. Those are leaves. There, those are grasses. We don't need to have detail everywhere. So I usually take these out at the end to make those refining finishing marks. I'm going to do one other thing here. I don't like how this um, light area in the sky just kind of ends abruptly. So I'm taking a harder pastel and I'm using it as a blending tool to kind of pull that light up into the sky just a little bit more on both sides of the tree just to integrate the, the light at the horizon with the blue up in the upper parts of the sky. You know what I could also do, I just realized, we could use the idea of cloud shapes, remember I talked about that in the beginning, to pull the eye into the painting. So I can create some wispy clouds up in the sky to kind of pull the eye down into the painting. And when you're painting wispy clouds, they can very easily go on top of the blue sky. There's where I had that mark on my paper, the indentation, so I really need to push the pastel in to get rid of that. The last thing I'm going to do, and then I'm finished, is the eye should never be led where there is nothing to see. That was uh, a quote from Robert Henry, or Henry, however you want to say it. And I love that quote because it reminds me <coughs> if I'm leading you back to the tree, there needs to be something there that's interesting. So I'm going to add just this little pop of blue back there in the, on the side of the tree trunk. So it's just kind of like a little piece of eye candy. If you travel to the back, you're going to get to see something interesting. I could also add a, a uh, pop of brighter green. Just, again, eye candy, something interesting when you get into the back of the painting. One other thing I just realized, we talked about the fence. Was I going to add the fence or not add the fence? Well, I added it in the little study, um, and so I like it there, so why not? So I, I'm just take the hard pastel and just put a few kind of rickety fence posts that get smaller as they go into the distance and bigger when they're in the foreground. And that's it. So I'm going to stop now. I hope that this has been... Uh, a fun demo for you to watch. Remember, you want to start with a bang. What do you do? Make a plan and start bolder and darker than you expect to end up and then you have better chance of success. So I will see you next time and thanks for tuning in.